Hey folks, you're Absolute Packer Podcast initiating in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, everybody out there in Packer land. Uh, that intro song was actually written by me. Uh, so I thought I'd just throw that out there. I write some original music. But uh, on to the meat and potatoes. Uh, welcome to episode uh, one of Absolute Packer podcast. I'm excited uh, to keep this going. And it's it's the off season. So there's, there's plenty of other topics outside of, uh, you know, regular season games and, and the week to week stuff to talk about. So with that said, um, this week, we'd like to talk about um, the Packer financials. Those were just released relatively uh, not too long ago. And then we can also talk about uh, the schedule. Now, the schedule, the regular season schedule was released uh, some time ago. I want to say may have even been a couple months, but it's worth looking at. And we were going to kind of just glance down opponent by opponent for a little bit. So uh, that's what I got. Elliot. Yes, I'm here. (laughs) <laughs> good good it was it was very empty on the other end no i'm just kidding um, uh, yeah i try to i try to mute it when you're talking so that i don't get uh you know whatever kind of random background noise here i'm recording at home i think you are too so i am i got some cats here in the background but they're being quiet did, so did uh, you hear the cats last time I, a little bit they're, <laughs> they're really they're really vocal cats they just walk around and they go wah, wah, right? wah, 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 wah. And i had to like shove them away for a little bit so if, time, so if your voice sounds weird at all in any places from from last from our episode zero uh that's because i tried to cut yeah. the cats or at least, at least minimize <laughs> the cats a little bit nice yeah. okay <laughs> Okay, yeah. I'm trying to think of how to segue out of that. I think we'll just yeah. go. So um, uh, we were you're gonna you want to go finances first? Yeah, I think okay. so. Um, and there, you know, I think it's very important to note um, that the Green Bay Packers. Most everybody knows this, but the Green Bay Packers are the only NFL team that is required to disclose any of their financials on any level, and that's by virtue that they're a, you know a publicly traded corporation. All the other teams are you know private business owners that don't have to disclose financials. Um, so every year when they come out, it gives not only the NFL or excuse me, not only uh, Green Bay fans a glimpse at how the Packers are doing. It gives the entire NFL a glimpse at to how the NFL is doing. And the, ta- uh, the Packers are kind of the, the snapshot into the league, if you will. Um, so the long, long story short, the Packers make a lot of money. Do you want to you want to just kind of like uh, give a summary of that article or what? what are your comments on that? Like I said, I think the overall comment is the Packers are doing very, very well. Um, and the league itself is doing very, very well. Um, you know, the, the Packers actually made some extra funds that you typically don't see by virtue of what they call relocation fees. Um, and that basically what that is, there were three teams this past offseason that relocated, which is, to me, it's an exorbitantly high number. And it just, but it basically goes to show that these owners and these teams, they want to make more money elsewhere. So you've got the San Diego Chargers, the Oakland Raiders, and the, the Rams, the St. Louis Rams, all relocating. And they have to pay a very big fee to the league that gets distributed out to all teams. And that fee over a two-year period for just the Packers is $50 million. So if you extrapolate that out to all 32 teams, that is $1.6 billion with a B in relocation fees that other teams can take in as essentially free additional revenue for virtue of just being in the NFL. So I'm a little naive and I are uh, uninformed, I guess. So that kind of came as a little bit of a surprise. I knew there were relocation fees, but I thought that that went to direct costs. Uh, This totally makes sense though. Uh, I I guess my assumption is that uh, it's to make up for the fact that when, uh, you know, the Rams moved to LA, they're going to not have this automatic fan base right away. And it's going to take some time to build that up. And so that's, that's going to work against, you know, the revenue sharing that the Packers get. So, yeah. Yeah. So is that, that's, is that the, the kind of the, the whole deal with that? You know, I don't know all the ins and outs of it either. Uh, I know some cursory information on it, but, but that would definitely make sense. Um, Cause yeah, when you get to this new, your new market, um, 
and there may be people hesitant to that. And then you're, you're getting sucked out of a, a, an existing market that you have to replace. So there is got to be some element of a time lag in keeping revenues up, you know, and that could be in, in, the, in the, the terms we're talking about in the fiscal quarters. I mean, it's multiple years to, to, to get this money that that high. So it makes per- that would make perfect sense, but I do want to just, you know give the disclaimer that I don't know all the ins and outs. Um, much of what I I t- like you, I just knew there were relocation fees. I didn't know how big they were, and they appear that big because again, there's three teams, not just one. There were three teams that so moved as a percent. Um, if, that's a pretty substantial amount, like of of the package total yeah. income. Yeah, four hundred and forty one million dollars, I believe, was the. That doesn't even include relocation fees. So you're talking 500 basically. <laughs> but percentage wise, it is, it is high without question. Uh, so um, the other thing in this article that I thought was kind of interesting is the fact that the Packers have almost enough in reserve uh, to survive an entire year with no income. They can cover all their expenses. Yeah. They call that the rainy day fund, which is kind of funny. They should call it the blizzard, you know, snowstorm fund um, instead you know, getting trapped in your house fund because you're yeah, in Bay. You, Sorry. You know, yeah. If we, if we have a blizzard head, that goes from August until February, you know, they might need to use that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting about that though. You're right. It only represents one year and I've heard rumblings. I can't tell you exact sources, but I've seen on social media and certain channels that the collective bargaining agreement uh, that they currently have in place, that's 10 years that was signed that may be coming to a head and it might get nasty because a lot of the players are saying, Hey, we don't make nearly as much money or guaranteed money as the other major sports leagues. And God forbid there is a stoppage, you know, even though the Packers have hundreds of millions of dollars relative to the league and what that actually means, it's not that much money. And I don't know how that compares to all the other teams, but yeah. And you'll never know because this is the only team that shares any of this. But my recollection is that when these things are roughly uh, kind of compared, that the Packers are pretty high up the list. We're certainly in the, in the top third in terms of revenue, um, you know, maybe even more than that. I would agree. Uh, and they're, they're, like I said, their brand and their fan base is just, I think I said it last, last podcast, I put them top three in the world. Their brand is credible and they have fans everywhere. You know, Part of the reason they don't and have not traveled to, um, well, I, sh- I should take a step back. They haven't they played the London game yet. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but each year um, a team goes over and play. They play one game in London, and um, it may be more than that, but uh, the Packers have never done that. And the, actually, more thing about the main reason is they don't want to take away a home game from Lambeau because that's crucial to their income stream. But what they'll probably do, and they try to pick uh, teams that have lousy fan bases, for like a better term, the Jacksonville Jaguars are constantly going over there. And they'll go on a, and lose a home game and nobody cares. So if the Packers end up do ever doing something like that, um, it would probably be an away game for the Packers. So that's just a little anecdote, but it's, you know, that, that's the league trying to spread their footprint. So we, uh, that, that, I, I think that that kind of segues a little bit nicely into that next topic that you brought up, which was about ratings overall for the NFL. They, they look like they're a little bit down. Yeah, and I think this is a perfect, it kind of dovetails on the financials because, you know, on what appears to be on the surface, a very healthy football team, which it is, collectively speaking, um, there are some what we'll call signs of trouble that happened this past year where uh, there's a Business Insider article written by Nathan McAlone. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name. It was from February of this year, right after the Super Bowl, that looked at the collective snapshot of ratings in the NFL for the 2016 season. And ratings were down 12% year over year, which for the NFL, that's, you know, you figure that's a blip, but they are constantly growing in every which way or shape or form every year. So this was, I thought it was an interesting thing just to look at um, in relation to, you know, the league, the healthiness of the National Football League and that the Packers are obviously directly involved with that. Yeah, I think the Packers do great. Uh, so, I mean, income is always up. I mean, I, I never hear anything uh, I mean, they're just a well-run machine. So I think it's very interesting that ratings are down and, uh, you know, it seems like some of these other markets, you know, you mentioned before with the, the relocations, like there's, there's some issues. There's some, it seems like there's some problems. Yeah. And, you know, this may be, th- this is the first year, I believe that ratings have been down in some time. So this is literally just the first tiny blip you're seeing. 
if the trend continues, that would be troubling. You look at some of these teams that did relocate, um, you know, St. Louis, is that considered a small market? I would say it kind of is. And they left to go to Los Angeles, which was a huge market that didn't have a team. And everybody knows that, you know, Goodell and everybody wanted there to be a team in L.A. And not only did they get one, they got two because San Diego Superchargers, they left San Diego and went to L.A. So there's going to be two L.A. teams. And then Oakland, um, you know, that's a, it's it, I guess you consider that a small market. It's almost like greater you know, L.A. type of matrix there. But they're going to Las Vegas, <laughs> going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. And and the NFL hates gambling. God forbid. Don't go anywhere near gambling, but let's put a team right in Las Vegas. Well, I mean, they might hate it, but Las Vegas loves it. Yeah. And the NFL is double speak. I mean, it's a bunch of crap in my opinion, because, you know, they are so big on, on keeping any kind of gambling or any semblance. They don't even allow their players in uh, casinos and things like that, but yet they allow a team to go right in Vegas. So there's, there's a lot of uh, talking out of both sides of their mouth there, but let's be well, honest. They don't funny. want that. Uh, the Pete Rose thing and even Michael Jordan, you know, he didn't, he didn't like do sports yeah. betting and they, they can't stand fantasy football and things like that. It's, it's almost all this stuff in there. They're, it's very disingenuous. I guess the reasons for it are disingenuous. Well, but money is king. But you know, they want all the money, money to money, be money. theirs. <laughs> I think. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And I mean, betting on the NFL is huge. I, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. I'm not going to pretend to. But the league, you know, their their collective stance on it typically is, uh, it's not, you know, you know, they kind of just brush it aside. But it's, that's a huge, huge thing going on with the league. Um Sorry, I went off on a little bit of tangent there, but I wanted to note one uh, excerpt from this article. Uh, you and I talked about this a little bit before the podcast about, you know, and the heading here, subheading is what's going on from this Business Insider article. And basically to, to read it verbatim, it says, this study is backed up by a report by UBS. Analysts led by Doug Mitchelson showed that the decline in NFL ratings was greater among households that subscribe to a subscription video on demand service like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video or Hulu. And what that tells me is, and it, I think it tells everybody, is that, um, you know, that's a huge swath of America that has those services and a very tiny percentage that does not. They have solely cable or they have, they lack any kind of high-speed internet to, to do streaming. So um, it's, it, it's interesting. And again, this is so early in the process, I, I, it'd be hard for us to extrapolate out what it's going to become, but it's definitely something to look out for. Well, I can't stand live TV. I mean, literally the only live TV that I ever watch ever is Packer games. Yep, me too. I'm the same way. I hate videos, you know, award shows and all that kind of junk. I'm just like, eh. Yeah, and that was mentioned in its article too, that it's yep. not it's not just the Packers, but it's all live TV is basically down, mm -hmm. down, down, down. Golden Globes, the VMAs, uh, you know, the, the numbers are just plummeting. So, uh, and then... Uh, our, our next topic, I guess, uh, was to kind of jump into the schedule. And uh, the first thing that I want to point out is that highlighted line that we have that is the Bears game on September 28th, a Thursday. And coincidentally, that's going to be playing also on Amazon, not just on the NFL Network. Yes, that did catch my eye, too. Um, I don't know if that has something to do with it being a Thursday night game, perhaps, other Thursday night games that get played or uh, maybe they're, they're kind of putting a balloon out there in the NFL to try and see how these other streaming services work and they're using Thursday night games. I mean, I, I'm speculating, but that is interesting for sure. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to try to come up with uh, some more information for next week, but I, I'm surprised that I didn't hear about, or maybe I did and it just kind of like, you know, it just kind of blew by me. But I mean, I, I follow pretty much all Amazon news and I, you know, and most of the NFL news. So like that was uh, uh, surprising to see that on there. I, I, I guess maybe if I saw it, maybe I thought it was I don't know when the deal was made. So maybe I, I saw it enough in advance that I didn't like put two and two together. Yeah, it is interesting. Nonetheless, I think it definitely kind of stuck out in there. Um, the good news, uh, if we're going to hop right into kind of the schedule and whatnot, is they only have one Thursday night game. I think in the past they've had multiple Thursday and I'll say this, uh, this is what I'll call the X's and O's part that I'm maybe a little bit more in tune with in terms of just the league in general and, and football and schemes and all that. But um, it's widely known that the players and coaches and I mean, I wouldn't say the teams and owners, but the players and coaches absolutely detest Thursday night games. And it's because it, much of the product gets so watered down. You need 
a lot of time off to heal your body from an NFL game. And then in the NFL where schedules are so regimented, if you're playing three days early, your body many times isn't fully recovered and the product on the field suffers. There's been a lot of stinkers out there on Thursday night games the past couple of years. And everybody knows they added in there for, for money. It was done for money. It wasn't done for the league talks about player safety and that's a bunch of junk if they're doing things like this. Yeah. It's too bad. They couldn't have swapped those two, uh, the, you know, swap the Bengals for the bears had the bears on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I'm, you know, and I think the, on Thursday night games, if my memory serves me correct, it may only be on the NFL network. It may be on subscription cable, which I don't have, you know, I'm sitting here watching the TV right now and, uh, it's actually golf on in the background, <laughs> a live event. How about that? Um, but I have a digital, it's just one of those digital antennas. So if I'm watching any TV, it's just when I'm getting through the digital antenna, which is going to include Fox and CBS, which carry the normal games. I have no interest in trying to pursue NFL network and these other paid things to watch games. No, me neither. I mean, and I mean, uh, I'm kind of glad about the, uh, Monday night football game, like being the lions. Although, I mean, we, we get it locally though, right? Yeah. Yeah. That will, that, that you will. I think it's on ABC cause it's like an affiliate of, uh, um, what the heck is it? Uh, you know, when there's other big games on Monday nights, that really kind of bugs me because I can't, you know, I'm not going to buy ES. I'm not going to get ESPN to watch the one or two. I know. I completely agree. And I can't imagine a lot of people out there are doing that. And that's another that's another metric to see things dive, you know. Well, that's the main reason people have cable is sports. Yeah, true. So yeah. so people that are um, a little more into it. You know, I guess I guess more into it or just have more money than us. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're all about the cable. <laughs> I did have cable for a while, truth be told, but I I hated seeing that bill every day. Oh, my God. Well, every, and it, every month. And it was like I'm watching three channels half the time and I was just like, forget this. Well, I mean, the reality is that you you mostly watch broadcast TV when you have cable and you watch some sports. And, and then the rest is just filler. Like, really? Uh, like Fox News or CNN, like. Uh, you know, I can watch that online. What do, what do I care about? I hear you. So you want to, uh, you want to kind of go through each of these, uh, these games line by line. Yeah. I'm going to try and, uh, keep it about a minute per, per team. And I'll, I'll focus more probably on the opponent they're playing from what I know. And just maybe some things to okay. expect. Just I, I want to start. Okay. So Sunday, September 10th, uh, I believe I'm going to that game, which is awesome. Yeah. Ooh, uh, nice. I think that might be the only game I get to go to. <laughs> Right now, I'm not going to any games, so I may, I may or may not try. Um, we'll see. But I mean, if if I happen to get a ticket through a different avenue, maybe. But I, I won't be going to any games either. So I, I always like the Saints because they beat up on Brett Favre a few years back. Uh, <laughs> the, that was one of Bounty that was game. one of my that was one of my all time favorite games. <laughs> oh my God, he did get the hell beat up in that game. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, the Seahawks game, I'm also interested in because, um, I have a, I have a good friend who moved to Seattle mm-hmm. and she's a hardcore Seahawks fan. Uh, she lived out in, in Seattle, moved to green Bay for work and then, and then got to go back to Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Eddie Lacey is also there. I was just going to say, that's the number one storyline there is Eddie Lacey playing against his old team. And, um, I think, you know, what's funny is obviously the Packers let him go. And there was questions about his conditioning and weight, and rightfully so. Uh, I think he's a very talented back, but I think he's, you know, I, I would honestly question some of his, you know, work ethic and whatnot. But that's just based on what I see with my own two eyes. But they actually put in some kind of the Seahawks in his contract. They put in some kind of, you know, a clause that gives him incentives for meeting weight, like it's Pee Wee football. And, <laughs> you know, more power to them for doing that. But he's a good back. You know, I'm curious to see how our defense deals with him. And I really don't know. I mean, the Packers defense has kind of been rebuilt on the fly. Uh, they need some help based on, you know, what happened in the playoffs last year. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the story. The Seahawks are uh, – they owned the Packers for a while, and then the Packers have started to turn the tide. And usually it's where they play. When Seattle plays at Green Bay, we usually win. And this is how the NFL typically works. You usually win at home, and you tend to, to lose more on the road. And so Aaron Rodgers was like 0-4 against the Seahawks. Until he got him at home, and now he's like two and zero the past couple of years. So that's a huge part of it. Well, a lot of it was playoffs, though, and uh, I, that to me, the playoffs is just played completely differently. Uh, it just seems like some teams get it, and they they come out with extra intensity. Um, so 
I don't want to do predictions this time. I think I won't. Yeah, either. I think we should. I'm not interested oh. in that. <laughs> to be well, I think we, I think it'd be fun to just you know whatever. It's just it's just numbers, right? So I, I think it'd be fun like uh, right before the season starts for us to just put our predictions out there. Um, and, yep, yeah, I'm good with that. And uh, um, you know, I mean, a small bet like you and I will just wager. I don't know, like ten thousand between us. It'll be fine. Ten <laughs> thousand lira, which is like three cents, I guess. There you go. There you go. Okay, so. Uh, if uh, if you don't have anything else about the Seahawks, you can uh, go right down the line. Yep, I'll keep going. Uh, Sunday, September 17th, Falcons. Well, everybody knows the Packers got their tails kicked by the Falcons in the NFC Championship game. They have a lot of weapons, uh, Julio Jones being one of them, and our number four cornerback was by default our number one due to injuries. Um, but it finally caught up to us. We got our tails kicked. Uh, the Falcons are good. Matt Ryan, their quarterback, he won the MVP last year. But they also – absolutely gave away the Super Bowl. They were up 28 to three at some point in the third quarter. It's now become famous in memes. Oh my God. Yeah. And they pissed it away. And it's, it's entirely, I mean, anybody who it's possible that a, 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 a loss like that could still carry over to the next year. I'm not huge on stuff like that, but let's be honest. That was, that was a all time collapse in a big game and that could carry over. So, but I, and is this their home opener? I'm not sure. You would think so. Uh, okay. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, think I think it is their new stadium, though, um, which is probably... Oh, is that I open? This is the first year. It's, it's the old yeah, stadium. I saw pictures. Uh, when I lived in Georgia, uh, the Georgia Dome is what they played. And, you know, it's funny. When they first built it in, like, the late 80s, early 90s, it was nice. But how things change versus other stadiums now out there, oh, was that thing nasty. So it was time. Probably a $2 billion stadium, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you don't have anything else, uh, oh, next one. there. Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know a ton about the Bengals right now. Uh, what I do know is that they have a fair amount of, of decent players. They made the playoffs a couple of years ago. I think they missed it last year. Andy Dalton, their quarterback, he's pretty good, um, but he's nothing you know to write home about. Big, you know, he's not great. I would say he's okay. They have one wide receiver who's outstanding. That's AJ Green, and he's going to be a force. He's kind of like a, a Randy Moss type. So that should be, you know, a pretty good game. I think I will say this between every game we play, whether it's home or away, it, the defense, how our, how our defense responds versus, both versus the pass and the run. You know, as long as you got Aaron Rodgers, I hate to use that cliche too, but it is true. I think the Packers are going to do fine on offense, barring catastrophic injuries. But defense, I have no idea. I really don't. They need a lot of help. They're relying on a lot of rookies. So every week, you know, it's just going to be kind of wait and see, in my opinion. But the Bengals are... They're okay. You know, they're nothing terribly special from what I see. Uh, they, ha- they have a couple good players. They have a defender named Geno Atkins, who's really, really good. But the rest of the team is, you know, I would say is whole home. And they're, it's an AFC opponent, so it's not in conference. But it's a late game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. 325. So I thought that, I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, Bears. The Bears suck. Uh, the Bears still suck. They dumped Jay Cutler, as we know, and they paid some journeyman backup. I can't even remember his name. They paid him some absorbent around, exorbitant amount of money. I want to say it's $15 million contract on average. Um, so he's getting close to what Aaron Rodgers is making, making, relatively speaking, and he's a career backup. The Bears, are, I think, are – I mean, they're they're rebuilding in front of our eyes. It's, it's not a good team. They, they, they got old. Cutler was – he only won one playoff game his entire tenure there. But they did a couple of years ago. The Bears did beat us at home when Brett Favre came home and had that really cool meeting with Bart Starr at home when the Packers just crapped the bed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, and that was on the offense. You know, that was during that whole year where Aaron Rodgers looked completely off and no receivers could get open. Jordy Nelson tore his ACL. Uh, I, I see us. You know, I'll, I'll go out there and say I see us beating the Bears. You know, both times, whether it's home or on the home or on the road. But the Bears are gonna. They need a lot of work. <laughs> Big time roster turnover, and again, that one's going to be on Amazon. Yeah, curious about that. So, I mean, I that might be the way I watch it. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I hear you. My video is more reliable in my house than over the air, and it's probably going to be better quality. So, yeah, this this golf I'm watching in the background right here. It's on Channel Five. I got the digital antenna, and I got it, you know, raised up with a piece of tinfoil on my head. I'm just kidding, but it's it breaks in and out all the time. It's ridiculous. All right, Cowboys. October 8th. Cowboys. I think they're an ascending team. We played them last year, and I think we played them. We played them twice. That's right. The first time we played them, we Aaron Rodgers didn't play very well. That was at home, and we got we got beat pretty good. 
Um, but then Aaron Rodgers went on that crazy tear. And in the playoffs, that was that famous catch with Jared Cook that was like an all-timer to, to have us pull out that win. They have a young quarterback, Dak Prescott, in his second year who – he was a fourth-round pick, I think, last year, and he played great as a rookie. I mean, it had been a long time since I've seen a quarterback play that great. But part of the reason he played great, he had – a top five running back. Uh, their first round pick last year, Ezekiel Elliott, is going to be a crazy good back. So it helps a young quarterback to have an outstanding running game. And Dallas is a team on the rise. So you, th- you, th- you think Dak is going to have a, soft- a sophomore slump? You know, I have no idea. My, I tend to believe that because typically what happens in the league is, you know, your first year, there's not a lot of film on you. There's not a lot known and you can catch people off guard. But once there's film and once they figure out your tendencies – where that separates the good players from the great is, is just a lot of natural talent, in my opinion, and, and maybe some work ethic there. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he can dice up anybody. Some of these other quarterbacks that have great first seasons, they're littered across the NFL where they fade out. So once the once the book is out on how to defend you, um, a lot of people fade away. So it's entirely possible, but he's got talent, no doubt. Okay. Uh, Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings were an interesting team last year. They... They started out like five or six and zero, oh, and they beat the Packers. And that was when Aaron Rodgers still looked like he was lost with the offense. And I think after that, they lost a bunch in a row. And that's when the whole division really faded, and the Packers just took it. They had Sam Bradford. They traded a lot of capital, if you will. I think some high draft picks and some some money to get him. And he played okay, but he's kind of a, a quarterback who's good, not great. Um, Adrian Peterson left, although he's getting old, he's, he's in the, or excuse me, he's in the conference still, he's on the saints, but I don't know. I mean, the, the Vikings, they have an outstanding coach in Mike Zimmer and they have a great defense, but they withered away after they went five or six and oh, so, you know, either they're going to come out guns blazing, I think in the season, or they could have another, you know, they might've play, been playing over their head. I tend to think they were playing over their head, but they're, they're kind of a young team trying to figure it out too. But I still think the Packers are the team to beat in the division. So even, even in their, uh, their fancy temple stadium, you, you don't think the Vikings, yeah, you don't think they'll, uh, at a home game, you don't think they'll take it. They might. I mean, I think that the, the Vikings always play the Packers pretty tight. There haven't been a lot of blowouts lately. It's going to, again, every, everything that I say comes back to our defense. You know, I mean, I will say this about capers units, our defensive coordinator, who I'm not really a big fan of. <clears throat> Did I say that? Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, if any quarterback is a veteran and he's somewhat savvy, he'll carve up the Packers in passing. The Packers tend to give up a, a lot of yards and chunks, and then they'll bend but not break type thing. But any any quarterback who is who has who is pretty good and has some history and some savvy tends to eat our defense alive. And I just it's just the way it's always been. And when you get these really good quarterbacks, the Peyton Mannings and the you know the Tom Brady's and other guys like that, they usually eat us for alive so Bradford did pretty well last year I just don't think he's that good um, and their offensive line is junk I mean I think it could be a tight game but I st- still see the Packers winning probably I always get I always get afraid of the Vikings because like we should beat them yeah and like I said it's it's on the road you know on the road I think I read somewhere that coaches basically in terms of the schedule you want to win all your home games and split on the road so that's you know you want to be undefeated at home and that's the goal and then you basically even before things start they're giving up a split on the road you know, which is interesting so that tells you how hard it is to to win on the road yeah yeah well i mean you'd be 12 and 4 if you do that right so yeah it's a good yeah. record <laughs> yeah 12 and 4 that's that's a good spot to be new orleans saints is the next one that's at lambeau and the big story with them, uh, they missed the playoffs the past few years. You know, they won the Super Bowl after the Bounty Gate thing against Brett Favre, and then they slowly tailed off. Drew Brees is making a ton of money. They got a lot of old players. That roster is due to collapse, in my opinion. I think they're going to be in trouble. They, they've got a lot of salary cap issues, and they brought in Adrian Peterson, which didn't make a lot of sense. I mean, he's he's still good, but he's he's an old aging player, and they I'm sure they paid him a, a decent amount of money, and it's probably better to go young. But Adrian Peterson has owned the Packers, whether it's on the road or at home. So that makes me nervous. And I'll tell you what, Drew Brees could easily carve us up. He's he's a great quarterback. He's a Hall of Famer. And he has eaten our defense for breakfast at times. So, you know, I could, I could definitely see that going um, either way, even at Lambeau, just because of how savvy Brees is. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to 
Yeah, bye week. So that's when we're all depressed and sad. The bye. Yay. I think, well, I will say this. It's better that they have a bye. You know, it looks like it's basically right in the middle of the schedule, for lack of a better term. In the past, you, they never want, you never want to have a bye early. Teams don't like that because you get, it's a war of attrition over the year, you know, uh, over, the, over the season. And you'd rather get yourself healed up later than early because everybody's relatively healthy early. And then you get a bye and people drop out. So this is better than in the past, but I'd still rather have a bye even later in the year. Um, but this is, like I said, it's, it's, it's better, so I'll take it. So the November 6th line game that is on ESPN, Monday Night Football, that is surprising to me. But every year, except for this one, I've always been more worried about the Lions than anybody because I feel like they are better than they ever pl- end up playing, than their record shows. But but I don't know now. Yeah, they've always been a troubling team to me. I mean, they losing – you know, begets losing, winning begets winning, and they just got so much losing. I mean, Matthew Stafford, their quarterback, is is good. Uh, I wouldn't say he's great. He's making a ton of money. Um, they got – I'm trying to think of who their, some of their weapons are. Well, they had Calvin Johnson, but he retired, and he retired. And I saw comments come public the other day that he retired because he goes, there's no way I'm going to win a Super Bowl with the Lions, which makes two Hall of Fame players in that – and that team's history in the past decade or so that have retired. They played with one team, the Lions, and they've retired because it's not worth it. Barry Sanders was the other one. He did the same thing. He quit when he was on top because he knew they were going nowhere. And that's that's not a good look at all. Um, so I don't, you know, they, they've done a little better, but I still think, you know, this, this division's for the Packers. I'm, I don't know any, anybody they really drafted. I don't know a whole lot about their team. I know they signed Josh, or not Josh, said, no, TJ Lang, our old, left guard to a huge contract overpaid. He's a great player, but again, it's business and he's, he's on the wrong side of 30. He's been hurt a lot. That's a lot of money for a left guard. Okay. Bears again, anything else to say about the bears? <sighs> Not really. Uh, I hate, I don't like their stadium either. It looks like a spaceship crashed on top of the Acropolis and then we'll just leave. It. You know that that's how the people in Chicago describe it too. Yeah. And I think that stadium costs seven or $800 million. I don't know who the, the architect must've been had, um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. It's just, it's, it's odd. It's something like that. Something like that. All right. Baltimore Ravens. Ah, interesting team. Uh, they, they are a lot like the Packers in that they draft really well. They don't sign a ton of free agents, probably more than the Packers, but their general manager has been there for a long time. I think his name is Ozzie Newsom. He might have, might be there as long as Ted's been with the Packers, if not longer. They've always had a tough as nails defense. Uh, they've had a few players, really good players, you know, get older and retire. Joe Flacco is, uh, they pay him like an elite player, but he's not very good in my opinion. I think they'd say he's average. Um, but he got hot at the right time a couple years ago because he was in a contract year and they won the Super Bowl. And they didn't necessarily win the Super Bowl because of Joe Flacco, but holy cow, did he cash in. If you want to get money, if you're a middling player, be a quarterback get hot in a contract year and win a Super Bowl because they ended up paying him $20 million a year. And this was three or four years ago when $20 million was insane. Now there's, it's already getting to the point where $20 million is is somewhat low for some of these established quarterbacks. But other than that, um, I don't know a whole lot about this team. Like I said, they're steady. Um, I think they lead the league in, um, uh, what is it they call the um, compensatory draft picks, which Ted loves to get, Ted Thompson. And I think the only other team that typically gets more consistently is the Ravens. So that's just an interesting anecdote. They they build through the, they build through the draft, and they they've been a pretty steady team. They've won a couple Super Bowls in the last 15, 16 years, and yeah, it should be uh, should be a good game. It's at Lambeau. So our next night game is November twenty six at the Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers, another team modeled a lot after the Packers. Uh, kind of a small market team, and they have you know Roethlisberger, Hall of Famer. He's he's a I think he's always been an underrated quarterback. I mean, people know he's good and he's going to be a Hall of Famer, but he's left out of the conversation a lot when you talk about top five quarterbacks. He's just he's a he's mammoth. He's like six foot six, like two seventy. So it's like if you're trying to tackle him, it's like tackling a linebacker or like an up or an outside linebacker. Um, they have the best receiver in the league. Um, some would argue Antonio Brown, which scares the piss out of me because, you know, our secondary is not that good. And this is at Pittsburgh, so I could easily see uh, Pittsburgh taking that. Uh, okay, so we are on to the Bucks. 
I would call them an ascending team. This is going to be at Lambeau, which I think helps. Um, you know, what's funny is it, it, I'm looking at the dates here, December, and th- there's this mystique about Lambeau. It's cold and do this, that, or the other. I think that went out the window, you know, in the later five years. There, It's been there, but it's it's not really there anymore. The Packers love to throw the football. They talk about running it when it's cold, but it's the Packers can be had at Lambeau. You know, it'd be nice to reestablish that. But Tampa Bay, they got uh, Jameis Winston, who was a really kind of a – he was a really good player, I think, at Florida State, drafted a couple of years ago, number one overall pick. Uh, he had some baggage, but he's he's been pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say he's elite yet, but he's uh, he's getting better. I really don't know much about the rest of the team. Um, I know they have um, – I think they just traded for a tight end, or they have a tight end that, that's going to do well for them because you want to give your quarterback weapons. But Tampa Bay has been kind of a, a middling team uh, as well. I think it's going to come down to how, how much better is Jameis Winston as a quarterback. I think it's his third year. And he's, he's got a lot of talent, so let's see if he keeps going. Oh, we have the Browns. The Browns. The factory of sadness, as they're generally, as they're uh, so eloquently known as in, in the uh, Twitterverse and in social media. What a great moniker. So so that should be an away game we win. I, I'd like to chalk it up to that. Here's the interesting thing about the Browns. They have a general manager. can't remember his name, but he is all about analytics. He's the first general manager that, that, that's made his way into the NFL that uh, uses analytics more than anything. And what they've done is they have stock, they've traded away a bunch of, bunch of older players um, and they are just stockpiling high draft picks. And I think they will be good soon. I don't think this is going to be their year, but it's interesting that the analytics approach is, is, is going there. And it, it, I'm surprised it hasn't been adopted more in the NFL, but I, I think they're still a pretty crummy team. It's going to take years. They're turning over the whole roster. The, the culture of losing that collective, you know, team, the town and everything. And they've had goofy owners. They've had so many different coaches and general managers. It's they're screaming for something, but I don't think it's going to happen when we play. Almost the, almost the end of the season. So uh, we are away at Carolina. Back to back road games. Carolina is an interesting team. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, Cam Newton was the MVP. He played great. I think they were 15 and one. They got to the Super Bowl, but they lost to the Broncos. And then last year, they just they went the other way. I think they missed the playoffs, and Newton didn't have much of a year. And some of that, what's odd is, like I said, typically, you know, new players or younger players, they either fall back to earth after a couple of years because they figure out how to defend you. Newton, kind of, Cam Newton, he was pretty good when he came in the league, but he, he like, went crazy a couple of years ago. It took him a while to, to come around. Like, for, like almost four years, if not more. But then he just, so he had a great 2015 season, 15 and one, can't lie. But then something happened last year. And I think it could have been, you know, maybe the loss of players, but they really came back to earth. I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen with that game, but Cam Newton can throw. He's got a heck of a, load of, heck of a talent. He was the first overall pick a few years ago. Uh, fantastic athlete. So anytime you have a quarterback who's a great athlete, you can scramble and you run against Don Capers defense. Ugh. Just think about Colin Kaepernick the end few years ago. So when I, when I look at the end of the season and, you know, I know you, you don't want to make predictions, but, uh, and, and, you know, every team changes and, and there's always surprises, but boy, I see like five, six games in a row that should be wins. Yep. We, we have, we have just easy wins. I feel like the end of the season, the way it looks now. Yeah. To your point on paper, when you look at Tampa, Cleveland, Carolina, Minnesota, Detroit, yeah, I mean, we end at Detroit. Like, I wouldn't if we had to have an away game. I can't think of a better place to go. Sure, and I think last year it was may have been something similar. I don't know if it was the last game, but the the Packers had to win every game going out to to win the division and make the playoffs, and they did that. And I think they had to play Detroit to do that. Um, but here, here's what I'll say, um, and we don't even really have to go over the Vikings and end the Lions because we basically talked about it. you play every team in the division twice. So we got a good feel for that. But, you know, I think the Packers offense, and I'll kind of leave it at this, is going to be really good because they finally got Rodgers some tight ends to go over the middle and open up stuff over the middle. They've been having a lot of problems there. Barring injuries, I think they're going to be pretty darn good. They drafted three running backs, so they're serious about running the ball. Maybe not a lot more, but better. And they let Eddie Lacy go because, you know, they didn't like his work ethic, basically. So I think the offensive side of the ball is going to be pretty – Pretty darn good, barring injury. You have to always say that. 
The defense is a total question mark. I just don't know. You got a ton of young guys and a ton of guys who are veterans that played really bad last year. And you hope that it was just an anomaly and they'll turn it around. But it is just a complete unknown. The only other thing that I have for the for this week is the news came out that uh, Blues Traveler and Everclear are going to play free concert for the opener. Nice. At Lambo. OK. I think I might have seen something. I, I'm not a huge fan of either band, so I probably should have read more just to see where they were playing. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's the that's the thing, though, right? Well, they're not going to play in Lambo. It's going to be like outdoors, like, uh, you know, a few years back. But, um, you know, they're kind of older bands. Oh, yeah. I remember when Blue Traveler came out in the 90s. I'm a, I'm a child of the 90s. My band plays a lot of music from, from the 90s. I'm a little heavier stuff, but. You know, I love live music, and so it sounds like it almost may be like after the Packers won the Super Bowl, they'll have a concert outdoors by like maybe they'll block off one night or something. Is that what they're doing? Some something like that. I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but something like that. I think. So I don't know. I mean, like I like those bands, but I mean, I think I like them. I haven't heard anything from them in a decade, maybe longer. It's been a while. They were Blues Traveler. I wouldn't really consider consider a one hit wonder. Um, they had a few hits. You know, Everclear. They had. I don't know what the heck happened to them. They had that song. What was it Santa Monica? But I haven't heard of them in a long time. They're, the the music scene is riddled with the one hit wonders. So, but I do remember when both those bands got popular right around mid '90s. So, uh, any closing thoughts, or uh, we can we can see everybody next week? Uh, I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's. All I got. Podcast, podcast. Cheer. I know, right?